So, Phil, six strings on the guitar. We'll start with giving them a quick tune. Um, that's your E string. Should sound pretty much like that. This is your A string. This is your D string. This is your G string. I know. That's funny. This is your B string. And this is your E string again, different octave. If you can't come across something that gives you those notes or a tuner or what have you, um, hope that that one's close. But even if it's not, it doesn't wicked matter. Um, on that, put your finger firmly on the fifth fret, which means one, two, three, four, five. And you want to be close to the fret that's just above where you're pressing. Um, so you don't get a buzz. If you're back here, see how it's kind of muted? And then it buzzes as I roll forward. But if I simply put my finger as close to that fret as I can um, without going over, because if you go over, then you start muting it again, um, that'll give you the clearest note. So that note on, on, on your E string, so your fifth fret on your E string, should sound just like your next string open. hear a hair difference whatever get them as tight as you can the same thing applies if you go to your a string and you go on to the fifth fret and you play for the next string open right onto your d string they should sound the same and then again if you go to the fifth fret of your d string and pluck your g string they should sound the same. If you have to watch this back again, so be it. I'm just kind of running through it quick so that if you need to get that guitar in tune, this is how you do it. Um, then on your G string, um, you're going to want to go to your fourth fret. So you've been doing five all the way along. You're just going to slide back one fret, play that note, and it should be in tune with your B string. And then finally, we're going to return to the fifth fret of the B string to your, your last string is an E. So that will allow you to tune it. Okay. Um, and, and when we get into the chords, they should sound almost like you meant to. Um, if they don't sound like you meant to, you probably have one string that's out, and you'd be able to hear it. We'll crank this one down, and you'll hear... Okay. Something seems wrong there. <laughs> so that A string is out. pretty all right so they're back in again okay simple tuning and then um, for the song you showed some interest in that I could find that would seem to be the simplest to start you with um, right off the bat it's going to take three chords it's going to take a G chord a D chord and a C chord Alright, so a G chord, if we're on, I'm going to refer to them as strings, but you'll hopefully be able to see, if we play a G chord, we're going to put our middle finger on that third fret of your E string. We're going to put our pointy finger on the second fret of the A string. And then back here, 
we're gonna put our ring finger onto the third fret of the E string. Um, those are the notes that you'll actually be making with your fingers, but we're gonna strum all six strings for that G chord. Okay, so you're on that third fret of that G string, you're on that second fret of the A string, and you're on the third fret of that E string. And strumming, you want your pick angled up a bit as you as you come down. I'm trying to see if I can. I don't want to be digging straight in. I want the pick kind of easily going across. When I come back up, I'm going to flip that pick the other way and let it kind of come across. Sometimes you're, you're going to hit it really, really straight, but generally you're going to be that way going down and then you're going to pivot it and be that way coming up. Um, if you're just using your thumb, that's fine too. Um, the pick, you want to just have a little bit of it. Where are you? Here you are. You want to have a little bit of it out. You don't want to pinch it with all your strength. Um, you, When you hold the pick, you almost want it so that it just comes out of your fingers. You don't want to be holding it so tight that it won't let go. Um, just enough so you don't drop it. Okay, and you get that nice. So that's a G. Then we're going to show you a D. Now a D is only going to use the skinniest four strings. Um, it's not going to use that the two fat strings. If you get into them, it's not a huge deal. Um, you'll hear. We'll get there. So pointy finger goes on your G string, which is your fourth string. Um, it goes on the second fret. Your middle finger goes on the second fret of the E string. So you've got one string in between that's doing nothing right now. But those two fingers are covering your G string second fret and your E string second fret. Then your ring finger is going to get in there on the third fret of the B string. Now on a chord like this where all the fingers are bunched up, it is tough. Fat fingers, skinny fingers, short fingers, long fingers, stumpy fingers, whatever, can all do it. It just takes some time to figure out how you've got to, you know, get your fingers in there so that you hear it clear. You want to hear all, all four strings ringing clear. If you're not positioned right, you'll, you'll get, you know, a mess of noise. Um, you, you could get, you can hear that's not ringing, so a little little movement and hey there it is so that's your your D chord second fret on your G string third fret on your B string second fret on your E string so G to D and you should <clears throat> before we get into the the song part of it which I'll put into this but it'll take some time this isn't a day's worth of work you should practice being able to move between them. <clears throat> and if one strum is too fast, and you're not always right on the chord when you start. If you've got a little mush in the middle, generally speaking it's not going to be noticed. Alright, our final chord for the song is going to be a C chord. Uh, we had our G, our D, and now we'll go to a C with our ring finger is going to go on the third fret of your A string, which is your second fattest string there. Your middle finger is going to go on the second fret of the D string right next to it. So here and then here. And 
you should hear those nice and clear. And then finally our pointy finger is going to go on our second skinniest string, our B string, at the first fret. And it takes a little while for the finger to, you know, be able to do this happily. Um, where am I turning you so that you can see? Okay, um, and, and y y you'll figure out, mainly you want your thumb kind of in the center of the back of the neck. You don't want to grab it like a baseball bat. Um, that thumb, if you think about trying to pinch something, that's your best way. You wouldn't try to pinch something like this, which is what you'd do if your thumb was wrapped all the way around. You want to pinch something like that for the force. So with your thumb in the back of the neck, then when you push down up front, you're essentially doing this. It's, it's easier. So, our C chord is going to be, again, ring finger on the third fret of your A string, middle finger on the second fret of your D string, pointy finger on the first fret of your B string. And on this one, <clears throat> I got something stuck in my throat. Um, we're only going to do five strings. We don't want to grab that E. If it's in there, it's not a huge deal, but it doesn't belong. So, um, right, we'll, I'll do my darndest to not sing, but um, it's uh, Eric Clapton there, wonderful tonight or whatever it's called so um right it, it's late in the evening I got it all right there but um, and obviously you'll see I play incorrectly I, I learned this way I taught myself this way and it's it's bad uh, the, the, the the whole deal just is, is easier um, if you push that wrist out a touch and that's going to be uncomfortable to begin with um, and go ahead and do that now Eric Clapton happens to like for example if he was playing that uh, G chord, he uh, he puts his thumb around and grabs that note there. He doesn't put his finger there. He's he's a crazy one for his thumb um, when he does that. That he's actually using his thumb around back. That's an uncommon thing. Most people would do it up front there. <clears throat> so anyhow, um, if you practice those three chords. At least you'll, you'll know where you're going with them. A G chord, a D chord, and a C chord. And even if you just count to four, count to four, count to four, count to four. part that helps to really identify it's that song um, is it, just going to be on that G chord <clears throat> 